Ja. Larry Martin and I'm a solutions consultant with Beyond 20. Today we're going to follow up on a video that we did prior where we were looking at how you can start using ShareWell to begin looking at your total cost to provide a service. Now the prior video we looked at starting to track time against services using tasks and incidents. Um, today we're going to look at costing. Uh, so prior, it was more about looking at the amount of time spent on a service. Today, we're going to start looking at one way you could look at uh, applying cost to those services. Uh, and the way I've elected to do this is, for this demo, is to look at the cost that you have for your different types of technicians or staff. Uh, so in this case, we're going to set up some costing tiers and then those tiers are going to be applied to different users. Now the cool thing about this is when you get your costing set up, if a particular user moves into a different costing group, you can update their costing group so that all future um, tasks that they perform are at the new rate, but all of the historical is at the prior rate. So this will allow you to um, keep an accurate costing throughout the year even if staff are moving around and you know being promoted or going into a different team um, so the general idea here is that you would set costing against um, you know different tiers and then you would apply those tiers to your staff so I'm going to show you what we've done and then we'll show you how to do it so first over here in our rich client we added a new table. We called it User Info Costing Tiers. Now all it is is to give us a costing tier. You could call this Tier 1, 2, 3, 4 through however many, or you can give it a name like Web Services or Desktop Tier 3, um, or we could have a costing tier called um, Service Delivery and that one's at $45 an hour. And the assumption is that in this case that the costing is per hour. You can obviously expand upon this however you need to or what makes sense in your environment. You may go by team rather than user, so you would have to make a different change. So once we have our costing tiers, then we can go to our user info. Um, we'll look at this in the um, admin client, but remember user info to be visible you will have to actually expose it. Um, you don't have to use the user info table. You can do it through the admin client. But all I did was I take, took a user like Beyond Larry, which is my test account, and I chose a costing tier. And notice that the cost per hour updates based upon whatever tier I add myself to. So as I'm going through my annual maintenance or use of the system, when I get promoted and I move to the Escalation 3 team, my costing is less even though I may have a different salary. So the costing tier isn't related to my salary, though hopefully uh, the costing tiers are in order and my promotions would also lead to a higher cost for my uh, work. But it's basically anyone who is in this tier, this is what you charge your clients or charge back within an internal budgeting system. Irregardless, uh, I'm going to put me back in web services because I want to show that it functions with the decimals. Um, save the record. Now, inside the rich client on an incident, I did a couple different things here. We primarily are tracking cost against the tasks, and then we're aggregating those costs up to the incident level. So in this case, the cost to provide service on this incident 
so far has been $486.70. Where did that come from? Well, that came from uh, a couple of tasks. Larry created a time tracking task and he put in, I believe it was two hours, and at his bill rate of 98.35. Now, if I go and change my costing rate tier and create a new task, then I will have a new cost on that new task, but this one will still be 98.35. We also had Gina who has not completely closed her task and she spent two hours. Well, she's going to come back as she's closing it and whenever she updates that to be four hours as part of her closure, and then she's going to acknowledge it, she's going to close it, and the update's not going to happen until save, so either she would have saved the record after updating the task, or she'll go ahead and close her task, which will update the record. So, we may have to do a refresh here because it did not update. And so whenever I created the new task, we finally updated. So there's a minor bug on my uh, calculation here where it did not update when Gina added additional hours. But you can walk through that and fix that. Um, bottom line being that it's going to aggregate those costs up whenever the uh, on a calculation. So let's go ahead and add this new one. Uh, test. And we'll track my time spent. We'll put two hours. Uh, we'll save. And now we've updated again. So whenever I had Gina manually go in and add additional time when she had an open task like this, I'm going to go to four. We were at 973. And we're going to save. And we updated. But since I had her walk through, so the one way to fix that would be simply to put a... Uh, save and refresh whenever you're walking through this. It doesn't really matter because this is a calculation and whenever you do a dashboard or a report you're actually going to put the same calculated aggregate against um, tasks rather than the particular incident for your reporting purposes because you're going to want to go through the incident and roll all these up just to make sure all the information is current. Uh, again, you can do several different things as far as making those calculations. So, how did we do all this? Well, in the admin client, we're going to, I'm going to open my existing one as usual, but you'd create a new blueprint, and you've got to, first off, you've got to create a new table. So, in this case, I just called it user info costing tiers. Um, created a new table, it's got two fields tier costing and tier name. Tier costing, is just a number. We want to make sure it holds currency. No other settings. Uh, well, and then on our tier name, it is nothing more than a text field. I give it 30 characters, make it as large as you need to. Just remember to make sure that you have the same on user info. And then a simple form. So now you create your tier costings, you enter your name, and you enter the price for that um, tier. Now on user info, I had to edit this business object, and went to business object properties, and we check the show in table management. Out of the box, this is not checked, but we did this so that we could go into uh, the table management in the rich client to actually update our user infos. Now on the user info, we did modify the form and we added two fields. So we added the costing tier field and that's a text field with the same length as in our tier costing table or user info tier costing. Nothing in the properties but in the validation we simply said validate from user info costing tiers tier name. We do want enforced in validation and we wanted to change when um, limiting values change. That's all we did there. Then we have a cost field. So on the user info, I just put a label. But our costing is a numeric field, five digits, two decimals, and it holds currency. It has no property set, but our validation is an auto population that when the user info's costing tier changes, then we update 
uh, the costing user info dot costing from the costing tiers table to your costing field. So, and then we drug the costing tier field over, and we added a label with the expression uh, the word cost, and then the user info dot costing field. Next, we went to the task object. So on task, we're going to edit. And on the task, I'm going to go ahead and drop to the tab form because that's the only place where I added cost. But on task, we added two fields, cost, and it's a number, uh, seven digits two, that should be a five to match the system. Uh, properties, nothing set here. Validation, auto populate. So when our task on by is changed, we're going to grab the user info field costing. And so that's just going to give us the tiered cost of this user if that user has a tiered cost. Uh, one additional thing that we did here was in the advanced properties, selected category and typed in service cost. Uh, that probably should be task cost, but whatever makes sense in your environment. Then the other field is total cost. Our total cost field again is a number, five digits, uh, two decimal digits, and it holds currency. In our properties, we have a value to set before save. And that value is a number expression that multiplies the time spent times the cost. So, you know, if I spend four hours, then multiply my costing tier uh, value by that amount of time. So four hours at $85 an hour or two hours at $112 an hour, whatever those top costing tier costs are for my user. And again with the advanced category service costs so that my two fields showed up here. Um, just to help with the demo to show uh, in the rich client, notice on my task I can scroll through here and see how much each person's costs were or their uh, costing tier value. Um, so I just put that there for demo purposes. You may or may not want to actually display that on your tasks. I probably wouldn't, but that's up to you. Uh, see, then the next change that we made is on our incident object. So on our incident, we added a couple fields as well. Uh, and I put those fields in this, in or updated A field, and I put it in this incident costing. Now this field is also a number, five digits, two decimals, and holds currency. And on this field, we added a calculated value, and that calculated value is a stored expression, total task costs. And all that expression is, is an aggregate. And this is similar to the aggregate that you'd use everywhere else. So the relationship, um, it's an aggregate on the relationship instant owns tasks, we're getting the total and we're getting it against the total uh, task dot total cost. So with that, anytime we refresh the incident, this is going to update. It's going to uh, step through the relationship incident owns task, look at all the tasks, and total the task uh, costs and display it here. Now you may or may not want to display that on your incidents. I did it just for the demo, but that's pretty much all there is to this. Uh, and as you saw in our rich client, as we added tasks, and for now I only set up values on Gina and, and Beyond Larry, so that's why they're the only two in here, but they do have different costing. Uh, so 9835 and 145, but then if you do the math, the tallies up here. Anyhow, I hope you find this video useful. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We produce these videos every week for you. Uh, always trying to show you something new and how to make things happen inside of ShareWell. If you have questions, you can email us, tweet us, or post a comment here in the channel. And someone will either reply via email or we'll produce a video to show you how to do what you've asked about.